Decimals review. So let's go ahead and practice how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide with decimals. Number one, our problem is 23.56 plus 45.9. So when you're adding or subtracting with decimals, you need to make sure that you line up the decimal points. So this next one here is 45.9. So I gotta make sure I line up my decimals, and then I'm gonna fill this in with a zero here. And then I'm just gonna simply add. And this is 14, I'm gonna bring up my one, bring my decimal down, that's very important. Five plus three is eight, plus one is nine, and two plus four is six. So my answer to number one is 69.46. For number two, we're going to add again, but this one is going to take a little bit more practice with, um, with uh, setting it up and lining up the decimals. So this one, I'm going to put my 3.456 over here because my next one is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, plus 0.6. So I need to line it up carefully. So I'm going to do it this way kind of working backwards. And then I need to go ahead and fill in with zeros. Zero, zero. And now I can go ahead and add like this. Make sure I have my zero, or my decimal. And that's my answer to number two. For number three. So again, when we subtract, just like when we add, we need to line up our decimals. So I'm going to go ahead and line them up like this, and I'm going to go ahead and add a zero here. And I'm going to go ahead and subtract. So five and seven, and this, I had to borrow, if you remember that from elementary school. So my answer is 375. Point three. And going on to number four. So here I have 90. Well, actually, I have um, 30. Let me erase that. So I have um, 36.5 minus 90.5. And what we really want to do is find the difference. And so it's best to set it up like here. And since 90 is bigger, we know it's going to end up with a negative number. But we're going to go ahead and subtract to find the difference. And when we subtract, I'm going to borrow over there like that. So because the 90 here is bigger, this is going to end up being a negative number. And so we found the difference, and then our answer is a negative 54. Number five. When we multiply and divide, or just say multiply, when we multiply, we do not need to line up the decimals. Now, these happen to line up. But um, we do it a little bit differently. So let's go ahead and just multiply. Five times five is 25, bring up the two. Five times three is 15, plus two is 17. Add my zero. Five times four is 20, bring up my two. This two's done. Four times three is 12, plus two is 14. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add Now it would be wrong, this is wrong. If you just bring down your decimal like this, that is actually wrong. So this is not correct right there. So let me erase it. What you do when you multiply with decimals is you count in your problem once, twice. So the decimal went back twice. So we need to do that here, one, two. So you count each of these separate and you add them together. So it went down once and twice, 
So once, twice, like that. And so the answer is, um, oh, I made a mistake. This is not a five, this is a one. So the answer is 15.75. All right, going on to number six. So 20.2 times 4.55. And again, for multiplication, you do not need to line up the decimals. So now we can just go ahead and solve. Two times five is 10, bring up the one. Zero times five is zero, plus one is one. Five times two is 10, add a zero. Five times two is 10. Bring up a 1, we're done with that one, and that's going to be a 1 and also a 10. Now I'm going to add two zeros. 4 times 2 is 8, 4 times 0 is 0, 4 times 2 is 8. I'm going to add all these. Okay, so now let's count our decimals up in the original problem. So 1, 2, 3. So here I'm going to go 1, 2, 3. And so my answer is 91.91. Number 7. 500 divided by 2.5. So when you divide, if you don't remember which goes on what side of here, Sometimes people remember it that if you've got a man riding a horse, when you get to the house, the man goes in the house and the horse stays outside, or the woman is riding the horse and the woman goes inside and the horse stays outside. And so that is one thing that my students have told me that elementary school teachers have taught them that helps you if you have a different way, that's great. Either one. So that's how we set up our problem for the long division. We have a problem because you cannot have a decimal on this side. You can have it on the other side, but on this side, you cannot have it. So we need to get rid of it by moving it to the end. Since we moved it one place over here, we need to move the decimal one place over here. We're going to fill in a zero, and now there's our new decimal, and let's bring it up. So the new way to write this problem is 25 goes into 5,000. And when we do that, our answer comes out to be 200. That's the answer to number 7. Number eight, so we have 3.6 divided by 3.2, and so we're gonna do 3.2 goes into 3.6. So we need to get rid of our decimal, so let's move it over once here and once here. And so our new problem is 32 going into 36. Here's our new decimal. Let's bring it to the top. All right, 32 goes into 36 once. So one times 32 is 32, I'm gonna subtract. If you don't remember how to do this long division by hand, no worries because the next worksheet will go through a lot of long division to help you remember how to do it. I'm gonna add a zero, I'm gonna bring it down. So this is also a one. One times 32 is 32, subtract. We're gonna get six. Bring, add a zero, bring it down. 32 goes into 60 twice. Two times 32, I'm sorry, it's not 60, it's 80, apologize. Two times 32 is 64. I'm gonna subtract and I'm gonna get 16. And I'm gonna add another zero, I'm gonna bring it down. 32 goes into 160, actually goes in evenly five times. And so five times 32 is 160, so no remainder. So my answer is 1.125. And again, if you're having trouble with the long division, don't worry, the next video is about how to solve long division without a calculator.